Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. In this little mini-series on mixing, we've gone through setting up your mix session. We've gone through the second step that I do, which is checking the phase, specifically of the drums. If you haven't watched those two videos, go back and watch those. In this video, I'm gonna talk about probably the most important step of the entire mix process. And you're not gonna like it because it doesn't use any plugins at all. So this step is what may be called the static mix. But a lot of th that phrase doesn't do it justice. That makes it sound boring, and it's not boring. To me, it's the most important creative part of the whole mixing process. So what does it look like? Well, it's really very simple. There's just one rule. No plugins allowed. Now, that may sound crazy. You'll get to the plugins eventually, I promise, and you can tweak them to your heart's content. But before you do any of that, you've got to get a good balance. Years ago, back in like the Beatles days, audio engineers wore lab coats and they were called balance engineers because their goal was to balance the different microphone sources as the musicians performed and it was recorded straight to tape. Talk about pressure. Our job is still to be balance engineers. While we do use things like EQ and compression to balance out the dynamics and to balance out the frequency spectrum, the very first job is to balance out the tracks themselves, both volume-wise with the faders and width panning-wise with the pan knobs or sliders. Those are the only two things you are allowed to touch during this phase of the mix. Sometimes it'll only take you five minutes to get a good rough mix or static mix. Sometimes it might take you an hour. It does not matter. Even if it takes you, every minute you spend on this part of the mix is going to save you, I would imagine, two to three minutes on the back end messing with EQs and compressors. Why? Because so often the problem that you're facing in a mix, let's use bass for example, you're sitting there listening to your mix and you've been mixing for a few hours and the bass just feels wrong. It's boomy and woofy and it's not tight and punchy like you want it. So you grab your favorite EQ, you grab your favorite compressor and you start just messing with it, tweaking knobs, tweaking knobs, getting it, okay that's a little better, no let's start over, that's not it, let's start over. And you do that over and over. When in actuality most of the time the problem is simply the bass is too loud or the bass is too quiet. You're trying to use EQ and compression to either turn the bass up or down when all you had to do was push a little fader. That's what I'm talking about. If you can get those balances right at the beginning, then you're not using tools like EQ and compression to do things that should have been done with a simple movement of a fader and a sliding of a pan knob. So, this is my challenge to you. If you've never done this before, the next time you mix a song, don't allow yourself to use any plugins. It's gonna be tempting as soon as you start out. The song we're gonna look at here, the vocal is pretty thick sounding. I wanna remove some of that low end. That's gonna be my first tendency, but I'm not gonna do it. I am going to continue to move faders and pan knobs until I get the mix feeling good. If you can get it to where it sounds like, hey, this is a good mix then you're ready to start adding plugins and making it even better. But if you jump in and you just push up a kick drum and then you start adding a bunch of stuff to it, you're shooting yourself in the foot and your mix will not turn out as well as if you spent a good amount of time just getting the levels right. Now I'm going to show you kind of how I do this. I'm not going to walk through the whole process, but I'll show you kind of before and after and then you can go do it on your own mix, okay? Okay, here are the tracks that we've been working on for this series. Incidentally, this is my song, Fighter. Uh, which has been the outro music to these videos. Uh, but these are the raw tracks with nothing happening on them. There are no plugins here. I guess technically I have plugins on these channels here. They're not doing anything, but I'll turn them off as well because those are a part of my template. The only plugin we have is Mix Tool. That's the only exception. If you saw the last video, we used Mix Tool to flip the polarity of the overhead mics and it made the kick and snare sound better. So that is my, I guess, if there was an exception, if you're going to call me out on not being consistent, that would be the one. Everything else, though, does not have any plugins on it. And I'm going to start by pulling all the faders down of the audio tracks. So now when I hit play, you hear nothing. And if you, in case you're confused, let me just spell this out a little bit more in case this is your first mixing video and you're not sure what I'm talking about. This cute little guy right here is a fader, okay? Zero is kind of the starting point. You can go up usually about 10 dB, and you can go down as far as you want to go. This controls the volume of this track, right? I know that's really obvious, but it's worth saying. This is the pan control. Panning lets me say I want to pan this to the left or to the right or up the middle or somewhere in between. 
Okay, usually, just so you know, there's usually a control to get it back to center without having to sit here and do this manually. For Studio One on a Mac, if I hold down the command button and just click it, it jumps back to zero. Little fun tip. Same thing with a fader. If I click on the fader while holding command, it'll jump to zero. That in Pro Tools, I think it's the option key on a Mac. So little extra tip for you. But otherwise, I have nothing else in this session. You can see over here is my list of plugins, but I am not even going to look at them. I am just going to sit here and work on these tracks, the purple tracks, all the way to these kind of lightish, aqua-ish tracks. And I'm going to spend as much time as I need to spend to get them to this, the level that I need to get. One other thing, I am going to be looking over here at this meter, which is set to K20. I'm going to be trying to get my overall mix to be about this level and getting up in here in the louder parts. That's going to be a quick reference. As I start listening, I've got my volume set to the volume I always mix at for my speakers. I'm going to turn up the tracks until they hit roughly that volume and work from there. So I'll be probably, you know, if I get it and everything's just a little too loud, I might come select all the tracks and I might turn them all up or down a little bit. And that's totally fine. But the idea here is I'm only touching panners and faders to get a killer static mix that sounds great without adding any plugins. If you aren't capable of doing that, either your tracks need to be better, more well recorded, or you need to spend more time on the static part. Will there be problems by the time I get to the end of the static mix? Yes, yes, there are th there's a reason we use plugins like EQ and compression, but we don't need to go there so quickly, okay? All right, that's enough intro for this. I'm gonna mute my microphone and fast forward and come back and talk to you once this static mix is done. Here we go.
Of a fighter, and I never was, and I never was much of a fighter, much of a fighter, and I never was.
Okay, so I lied. I let you uh, listen along as I did the whole thing, because actually I think that's probably more helpful than me just talking about it. So you may have noticed a few things. I know it's hard to follow. It's a full screen thing, and I'm jumping all over the place. But the only things I touched were volume and panning. And I clicked around to different sections, and I soloed occasionally to make sure I was hearing the right thing. Um, and that was it. And towards the end, you may have seen my clip light went off. I was just getting too into it. The mix got a little loud, so I would literally just select all the tracks and then just pull the fader down on everything just a little bit. It's so much easier to do at this point in the mix when there are no plugins, no automation, nothing. I can just pull the volume down. Um, and then you can see I kept inching it back up uh, because it does sound a little bit better, a little bit louder. Now, are there problems with the mix? Yeah, sure, absolutely. The uh, the background vocals are too muddy. The acoustic guitarist got some low end that needs to come out. The vocal, you can hear it in some spots and not in others. That's why we compress a lead vocal. But letting it finding a spot for that lead vocal now while it's uncompressed is going to make it sit better down the road. Also it helps me to kind of hear, okay, the, the right electric guitar is a lot brighter than the left. And on the bigger courses, it's harder to hear the left one. It's thick and full, but it gets a little bit lost in the mix, so I have to figure that out. Bass feels great. Could probably get a little more crunch and character out of that to hear the changing of notes because he's just rocking those eighth notes. Um, that eighth notes one and two and three, yeah. Um, and then drums, you could see like initially drums and bass felt great. And then we add everything in and you start to lose it a little bit. So uh, you could see one, at one point I turned everything down and then I turned drums and bass up because they're really the foundation of a rock mix, and uh, then kind of saw how everything fits with that kind of newer uh, balance, and it feels great. Once there's some compression, a little EQ on those drums, they'll snap and they'll pop, and they'll sound great. Uh, even the loops, there's plenty of work to do on the loops to make them feel a little bit better, um, but this loop section that goes throughout the entire song, it just sounds cool. And even in the bigger sections of the song, I can hear that stuff cutting through just a little bit. Um, and it blends nicely with the drums and just is super fun. So that's that's my static mix. That's my process. Um, how long did I spend on that? I mean, probably 10 minutes maybe. I, and, and one final note that's really helpful. If you can find, just by looking visually at the song, find a spot where everything is playing or most everything is playing. As you can see, just by looking at the waveforms, this section here this last chorus and outro, everybody's in, except for this harmony vocal, everything else is there. So I actually set up a loop up here at the top, that's what this blue bar is, and I looped that section for the first probably five minutes, just letting it loop over and over and turning things up as I go. When it came time to listen to the toms, then I found a spot where the toms are, like he's riding the tom here, or he plays, uh, he plays both of them here in this section, so I went there quickly and just solo the two toms, so I can hear both of those. Uh, and then like the harmony vocal is only on the bridge, so I had to go to the bridge to hear that. The little slurpy sound at the end only happens right here, so we went there. <laughs> Literally, that's this slurp is me doing that twice in the vocal mic. And we just combined it to a stereo track. But combined with the cymbal swell that you cut off, it just, it sounds cool, because the vocal is the only thing that carries over at the end. Super fun. Uh, the loop, the background vocals, the harmony vocals, the echoes, there's just, you can see there's a lot of layers here, even though it's still a pretty simple track, and the third and fourth guitars don't come in till here. Fun story about those guitars, I was trying to play this second kind of lead guitar part in the studio, everybody was there, and I messed up a part, and I just started wailing on the guitar out of anger, and then Tim, the drummer, said, what was that? What'd you just do? And I said, I did this. I didn't even have, I had maybe my pinky on the right note and the rest was just kind of palm muted. He said, that was really cool. You should play that. So we laid down really quickly two takes of me playing angry. It's sloppy and I don't even hit all the right notes, but it adds an element to this final chorus that really works. You hear that bad note right there? But in the mix, it just kind of it kind of takes it over the top. Now, 
Now, I listen to that for four seconds, and I hear 17 different things that I need to go in and fix. The snare drum, it needs to be snappier. I'm hearing too much low mid and not enough snap. The bass needs to be addressed. The vocal needs to be addressed. There's plenty of things to work on. But this mix is so much closer to where it needs to be because we spent time doing this right here. So how do you know when you're done with this static mix part? Could you just go on forever? Yeah. Can you be done in five minutes? Yeah. The way I do it is I keep moving faders and panning and just keep going and just adjusting and adjusting and adjusting until I have either a physical or emotional reaction to the song. So physical, if it literally, I find myself bobbing my head to the beat or dancing or I get up to go to the restroom and I'm like dancing my way over there, you know, bite your bottom lip dance, then that to me, it's connecting with me on an emotional level that's making me dance or bob my head or something or play drums on the console. The other thing is if it gives me an emotional connection. So if I kind of get teared up at a certain section or it, I stop hearing the song and I remember why I wrote the song or the situation around that or the message I'm trying to get across and it connects to me emotionally, that's when I know I've gotten enough bad stuff out of the way to make it connect with me. And so if any either of those happens to you, you know you're getting close and just wrap things up and you can move on to the next phase of the process. But don't overlook this phase and don't rush through this phase. You may even want to, depending on how you structure your sessions, maybe give yourself a 30 minute to an hour block where your sole purpose is to do this. And you're not even going to let yourself get plugins. You're going to add plugins tomorrow. But today, your one goal is to get a really great, rough, static mix with no plugins at all. And then some other time, you'll come back and add the plugins. It might be nice to have that very specific goal and to not even give yourself the option to touch a plugin today. So however you want to structure that is completely up to you. But I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope it gets you excited about mixing. Speaking of mixing, if you need tracks to practice this on, maybe you don't have anything recorded or that you want to work on mixing right now, but you'd like to practice some mixing, you need to check out Dueling Mixes. Dueling Mixes at DuelingMixes.com. There's a free trial there. You get new tracks every month to mix, and you get access to a back catalog of over 50 songs for you to mix, pick and choose which ones you connect with, and get to work. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. See ya. Get back up and fight.